Polynomials, one of the most important things you need to know how to do to be successful in grade 11 is to understand polynomials, know how to work with them, and then from there we're going to move on into quadratic functions, which are pretty much the most important things you need to take with you from grade 10 to grade 11. So my plan is to go through the polynomials. We'll see um, what the response is like. If people are interested, I'll keep going. But I think the grade 10 curriculum is a real pivotal year. And um, I just wanted to help some of you out, who, especially those who are at home right now trying to learn their math on their own. So the first thing you need to understand is what is a polynomial? What is a monomial, a binomial, a trinomial? So I'm sure you understand the prefix in these words here, mono, like a monocycle, a bicycle, a tricycle, one, two, three, right? So it's the same thing with polynomials. When I say a monomial, I'm talking about one term. So some examples of monomials would be a constant. That is a monomial because basically I could write that as 2x to the power of zero because you should know from your exponent laws, which you have covered in grade nine, that anything raised to the power of zero is equal to one. So this would be equal to two. So this would be a term with x with a power of zero. A degree, right? The power is also called the degree. So if I say three x, the degree is one because this is x to the power of one. We never write one in front uh, for an exponent or even in front of a variable, right? Where if I say x, I don't have to say one x, you know there's one there. Also, another example of a monomial would be four x squared. So what I want you to understand from what I'm writing here is that this has a degree of two, degree, Okay, you need to know that this is a degree of one, degree one, and this is a degree of zero. So basically this wouldn't even be there. You would just write two. Now when we get into binomials, we're talking about two terms. And so I could have something like two X plus one. I'll put it in brackets just so you know that it's all together. So two X plus one, this would be a binomial. If I wrote um, x minus 2, that would also be a binomial. It has a degree of 1, this has a degree of 1, or I could have a binomial like this, x squared minus x, that's also a binomial with a degree of 2. So when you're looking for the degree, all you're looking for is what is the highest exponent of the term. Okay, so what is the highest exponent? So because this one has a 2, it has a degree of 2. A trinomial, so these again are referring to the number of terms. So if I wrote a trinomial, I need a three terms. So I would have something like x squared plus 3x plus 1. So this would be a trinomial. It has a degree of 2. Now I could also have a trinomial with something like x cubed plus x squared plus 1. That's also a trinomial with a degree of 3 and this one a degree of two. So these parts try, that talks about the number of terms, the degree of the term of the uh, monomial, binomial, trinomial is dictated by what the highest exponent is. Okay, so sometimes these little things that you, you just didn't learn along the way and then it all mixes you up because you don't know what people are talking about. So it's important that we get through to the basics here. When you are evaluating an expression for a given value of a variable, you're going to do this a lot, even right up to grade 12 and higher. If I want to know what is the value of this expression when x is minus 2, what I have to do is plug in minus 2 everywhere I see an x. I always tell my students when you're doing that, you need first an equal sign, because I'm giving you the statement when x is minus 2, and everywhere you see an x, you're going to put a bracket and plug in the value that I have here. Most important are these negative ones. Not most important, but trickiest ones. You have to be very, very careful anytime you see a minus sign in math. About 90% of all errors happen around these negative signs. So be very careful 
as you're plugging in, put a bracket, minus two, and then minus four. And I didn't leave myself enough room there, so I'm gonna bring it over here. Equals, so I have minus two, I'm going to square it. So a negative times a negative is a positive, and two times two is four, times three is 12. And two times negative two, so this is plus two times a minus two. If this had been a negative, you would have to be negative two times negative two. But this answer is going to give me negative four, so 12 minus four minus four. So that's 12 minus eight, and that's going to give me four. Okay, now the ascending and descending order. If a teacher asks you to write something in ascending order, that means you're going to be going from the lowest degree to the highest degree. So something like 2 plus 3x plus 4x squared. That would be ascending because it goes x to the 0, x to the 1, x to the 2. Ascending means to go up. You ascend. You go up the stairs. Descending means coming down. So descending order, that would be something like me writing 4x squared plus 3x plus 6. Normally things are written in descending order. Okay, so if you like power of 3, power of 1, power of 0. So normally things are written in descending order. It's just more of the, um, the way things are done in math. Okay, so let's look at some simplifying. So if I want to simplify, I have two binomials. In this case, I'm adding them together. I find that some students don't understand how to read this math. So what this says is that I have a bracket of 2x plus 3, and to that I'm adding everything that's in this bracket. So the first thing you want to do anytime you're simplifying this one or this one is you want to remove the brackets. So basically in front of this bracket, there is a one, right? You can put a one in front of anything because there's one of those. So as I simplify this and remove the brackets, so this would be like one times two X is two X, one times three is three, one times negative X is negative X, and one times four is four. And then you gather like terms. You've probably heard your teacher say that. Like terms are things that have the same um, variable with the same degree. So 2x and minus x, those are the same, or like terms. And we have these constants 3 and 4. You can add those together to get 7. And 2 minus 1 would be 1x, and 4 plus 3 is 7. So there's my, there's my first little one solve for you here, simplify. Again, when we see a minus sign in between, you need to really think hard about what you're doing because this means one, I have one bracket of this, so I just write that when I'm removing the bracket, and I have minus one now times everything in this bracket. So if you have minus this, you must change the sign of all the terms inside the bracket. So it's like negative one times positive four x squared is minus 4x squared. Negative 1 times negative x is plus x, and negative 1 times positive 2 is minus 2. And now I look for like terms, so I only have one with an x squared, so I have minus 4x squared, and I have 3x plus 1x, so that's going to be 4x, and I have minus 4 minus 2 is minus six. So that's how you would simplify. Be careful, really careful with these minus signs. Okay, so let's go on to some exponent laws, which you have covered probably since grade nine, maybe even grade eight. I'm not sure when they start this because I never taught elementary school. But exponent laws, you have to know them in order for you to be able to multiply and divide. So the first basic rule says if you are multiplying and the bases are the same, you add the exponents. So the base is this number here. This is a base. This is a base. This is base. This is base. So if they are the same and you're multiplying, you can add the exponents because x cubed means I have x times x times x, right? I have 
three of these and I have two more because x squared is x times x. So hopefully those look different enough that you can see what's going on here. So I end up with one, two, three, four, five x's. So that's x to the power of five. Or you could say it's x to the three plus two equals x to the power of five. Never put two equal signs on one line. It's just that I didn't leave myself enough space. Now, if you have x squared times y cubed, the bases here are not the same, so I can't add these exponents together. So I have, this just becomes x squared y cubed, and you can write it like this, which is much neater, it's compact, and it turns it into a single term here. Okay, now if you are dividing, this is your next exponent law, and the bases are the same. Again, the same thing. You can't divide x's from y's, or y's and x's. They have to be the same. So in this case, I have the same base. I'm going to subtract the exponents. So I'm going to show you why, and that's because in the numerator here, if I have x to the power of 5, that means I have 1, 2, 3, four, five x's up here. In the denominator, I have x cubed, so that's x times x times x. So you see now I have five in the top and three in the bottom, and because I can divide these into each other, so x goes, because everything's multiplied, right? That's important. No plus signs up here. Everything is multiplied. So an x divided by an x gives me one. This is going to give me another one. This is going to give me another one. So x into x goes like 1, 1, 1. And what am I left with? 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. And I have x times x is x squared. So you can see what I've done here is I've done x to the 5 minus 3 gave me x squared. Now obviously you're not going to write these all out like that every time you do your math. This is just illustrating why this works this way. So if you're dividing and the bases are the same, they're both x's, you subtract the exponents and there you go. The third law is power raised to another power. And that looks something like this or this one. Um, these are just multiplying, so we're just looking at these two first. So if you have power raised to another power, you're going to multiply the exponents. So that's because this means I have x squared three times. So it's really x squared times x squared times x squared, right? That's three of them, so raised to the power of three. And if I wrote these all out again, you'd have x times x times x times x times x times x, which means I now have six x's. So you multiply the exponents, so here's my two exponents, so it has to be power raised to another power, so right outside the bracket, that's going to give me x to the 2 times 3, which is, again, here I'm with two equal signs in one line, x to the 6th. Okay, so power raised to another power. Let's take a look at this one before we go over here. So I have 2x squared raised to the third power. So power to a power, but what you have to realize here is that this is two cubed and x squared cubed. In other words, if I asked you to write this out, you'd say I have three brackets of two x squared multiplied together. So really what you have here is this, two x squared times two x squared times two x squared. Now, the biggest problem that happens when people are doing this type of multiplication is they forget about the 2. This is 2 cubed. So, because you see here, I have 2 times 2 times 2. So I have 2 cubed and x squared cubed. So 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And x squared, x squared, x squared, I have 2, 4, 6 x's, so x to the power of 6. Or you could have multiplied those right here. But you also have to remember that that is 2 to the power of 3 as well. A big mistake and a very common mistake. So make sure you understand that rule as well. 
Okay, so this question here, you have 2x times 4x cubed. So when you're multiplying two little monomials together, the first thing you want to do is multiply the constants. The constants are also the coefficients of the variables. So this is a constant, this is a constant. So I have 2 times 4 gives me 8, and then I have x times x cubed. So this is to the power of 1. So that means I add these two together because I'm multiplying and the bases are the same. So that's x to the power of 4. And the last question on this little lesson part here, I have minus 3x squared y in brackets times, because there's nothing in between here, 2x cubed y to the fourth. So first thing, you want to multiply the constants. So I have minus 3 times 2, that gives me minus 6. And now I have x squared times x cubed, so these bases are the same. So I add the exponents, so that's giving, giving me x to the fifth. And y, 1, 4, 1 plus 4 is 5. It's very important that you understand these basic rules so that you can successfully expand and simplify equations. Multiplying monomials by binomials. So here's a little monomial out here, and I'm multiplying by this binomial here. So when you multiply things out, you have to multiply 2x times everything that's in the brackets here. So I have 2x times 3x squared, and I have 2x times minus 4x. So 2x times minus 3x squared, multiply your constants first, that's minus 6. And then I have x times x squared, that's x cubed. And I have 2 times minus 4 is minus 8. And x times x is x squared. Okay, so there's no more expansion needed here. I can't add or subtract these from each other because these variables have different exponents. Now, when we get into factoring, you would factor this if I asked you to, but we'll get into the factoring a little later when we get closer to quadratics. Another one to multiply here, so I have 4x plus 3. So you should read it to yourself, right? I have 4x's plus 3 times what's in this bracket minus 4 times what's in this bracket. Now again, watch out for this, right? This minus sign. So minus 4, I have to multiply everything in here by negative 4. Not just the first term, both terms. Okay, so 4x, it's still all by itself. It's 4x. Now I have 3 times what's in here. So that gives me 3x minus 15. So 3 times x, 3 times minus 5. Now the tricky part, always be careful around this negative 4. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And negative 4 times negative 3x, that's going to be plus 12x. And now you gather your like terms. So I have 4x plus, minus, or sorry, plus 3x, my vision is bad, that's 7, and 12, that's 19x, and I have minus 15, minus 4 more, that's minus 19. And the last question I want to do for you in this lesson is dividing. When we divide terms like this, what you want to do is you want to look at your constants, your x's, your y's, your z's, okay, one at a time. In grade 11, you'll get some really complicated ones like this. You have to understand what you're doing with each one here. So 4 divided by 2, that's easy, 4 divided by 2 is 2. x cubed divided by an x, so I'm dividing. These bases are the same, so I subtract the exponents, 3 minus 1. So that's going to give me x squared. y to the fourth power minus a y is going to be y to the 3. And z divided by z, so that's z to the power of 1 minus 1. That's z to the 0, which is just 1, right? Because they divide into each other. They're the very same. They go in once. So there's your dividing question.
Okay, so this lesson, um, these lessons that I'm going to be doing are all based on um, lessons from a textbook called Math Power 10. I will give the link to that in the description of the lesson and you can go there to find some homework practice. Hope you're liking it. Let me know what you think. If you'd like me to do more grade 10 math, I'd be happy to keep going for you. Bye for now.